Hello and welcome to Fun Explanations for NMR of Banana and Apple Oil. I'm going to pick up where we left off in lecture, actually recap quick first. Um, we looked at the structure here of isoamyl acetate or banana oil. We identified that there were five signals total, that we had a bunch of different types of splitting patterns. We found that this CH3 group was a singlet. We found that this pink uh, CH2 group was a triplet, which was distinct from this other CH2 quartet, and then we had a non-at, which is going to turn out to be a multiple, just like a lot of peaks for the green team, that CH signal, and then finally a doublet for the six hydrogens of these uh, two methyl groups. We then applied that and used just the splitting patterns to assign the spectrum on the next page of Isoamyl acetate. So this guy is given. Uh, we identified, hey, look, we had a triplet, so that must have been uh, signal A. This one here, we had a singlet. B, we identified over here is the only singlet, the CH3 group. We had signal C, that multiplet was the uh, methine or CH proton, and the only quartet had to be signal D. The only doublet was signal E the remaining CH3 groups. So we went ahead and assigned everything. Um, now to translate that into our tables, we're gonna need a little bit more to elaborate, to fill in. Um, I will let you all fill in the splitting and the number of neighbors part. Um, I really wanna focus on um, clarifying what to put for the expected chemical shift and for the integration. Um, let's do the chemical shift first because that's the one that you're more familiar with. Let's go ahead and define the ranges for each signal or what we're looking for with the range. So for signal B, we have a hydrogen that's connected to a carbon of a carbonyl. For signal A, we have a hydrogen that's connected to a carbon that's connected to an oxygen. And for the rest of these guys, it's just hydrogens connected to carbons connected to carbons. Um, this is going to be our alkyl region. This we're gonna be looking for an alcohol, and this we're going to be looking for a carbonyl. So those are the three different ranges uh, that we want to report. So we go to our NMR tables. We see uh, we have our alkane range, 0.8 to 1.9. We have this carbonyl range uh, where we have it um, next door to a carbonyl, 1.9 to 3.3. And then our alcohol range right there. Okay, so those are, that's all you need because you've already done the assignments. Um, there's no need to use uh, these other, I'm just gonna scroll over so you can see what I mean. Uh, there's no, new, no need to use these tables. You're welcome to do that just to support your assignments, um, but just the range is fine. So let's put those values in for A, again, it's, uh, I think it's 3.2 to 5.3 if I'm remembering correctly. Um, if we're in the carbonyl range, I want to say it was 1.9 to 3.3. I'll double check those in a second. And then the alkyl range for uh, C, D, and E, the remaining protons, was um, 0.8. Actually, I think it's 0.9 to 1.8. I'll double check those, I'll pause it real quick. But yeah, so that, that's all you need for the expected chemical shift. If you want to do the calculated, that's okay too. That'll just support um, your answers. Yeah, so I just fixed that. Um, for C, it's uh, 0 0.8 to 1.9, and then we have the same values uh, going on for there. Okay, so that's chemical shift that you're familiar with. The um, integration, I mean, you really, you could just put um, the number of protons associated with each signal. Um, so for example, signal A was two hydrogens, signal B was three, uh, signal C, I believe, was one. D was also two hydrogens, and then E was six. Okay, so that's if you're just looking at the structure, that's great. Um, but really, what the integration is is the area under the curve. It's not the peak height. It's actually uh, I'm going to highlight. So actually, I'm going to erase some stuff real quick, and then I'll come back. There's a cleaned up version. Uh, what we're specifically looking at is that little area. You can see these little squiggles. 
those are the integration lines. Um, and if we have this on the paper version, which I have separately, um, you can measure the height of each of those. And so you would go from here to here, from here to here, here to here, there. Okay, so the relative height of each of those peaks to each other is going to be equal to uh, the ratio of hydrogens associated with each signal. Now we already know what the ratio of each hydrogen should be. This is just supporting that. So you can see I did some fun things here uh, in pink. I highlighted where the integration lines actually were. Um, and then I went ahead and measured on, on paper, not on the screen, because the scale is important. Um, yeah, I gave the, the heights of each of those uh, pink lines from the, from the green to the green. And so what we want to look for is the lowest value. And in this case, the lowest value is 0.6. And this is going to relate to, in our case, one hydrogen. We already have some information. We know that um, there is a single one hydrogen signal. Um, so that's going to be our, uh, stamp, or our beginning point for our relative ratio. If we divide each one by 0.6 pause and just add those. That's what I mean by that. So you divide each one by 0.6 and that's going to give you um, a relative ratio for hydrogens. And so for signal D, it comes out pretty clean. I'll just do that one next to two hydrogens. Signal B comes out pretty clean to three hydrogens. 2.2 divided by 0.6 is about three. Actually, it's 3.6, but um, at this point, we know that um, we know what the structure actually is. So sometimes we do have to do uh, some guesstimation there um, or rounding to make it fit the structure. Uh, signal A is pretty clearly two hydrogens. And then uh, lastly, for signal E, 4.8 divided by 0.6. Actually, I think this one comes out to something funny too. This comes out to about eight hydrogens, but we know that we can't have eight. It must be a six hydrogen signal. Definitely a little bit of hand waving going on there with integration. It's important to know some things about your molecule going in. Um, there are other applications where you don't uh, necessarily know how many signals it's each, um, each one is worth. Um, so you do have to be a little more strict with integration. So anyway, this one is known. That's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's how you can use integration lines, curves, um, to figure out the relative ratio of protons. So now we're gonna skip over and do the same thing for um, apple oil. And I wasn't timing this, so I actually think I'm gonna make that a separate video. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, in the next one, I'll move on and do apple oil.